So I guess let's go ahead and go straight into our big topic here. And it's all about Xbox. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff has happened. A ton of stuff. And kind of the overall state of Xbox right now, at this moment, doesn't feel great. Nope. Um, that being said, it is important to put things into context because I, in a way, I think things are getting overstated, like the panic. Um, yeah, because I, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, I do believe that they have just had like their number one and number two most profitable quarters like ever, yeah. I, I think. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. But kind of the state of the console and especially, you know, their triple A games mm-hmm. seems pretty dire right now. Yeah. Again, though, but they are doing... I think an excellent job with double A games. Hi-Fi Rush was awesome. Mm-hmm. Pentiment was awesome. Grounded was awesome. They they did a miraculous job porting Age of Empires 2 to console and it's making pretty, it work with a controller. It's pretty it's nuts what they did for Age yeah. of Empires 2. Like I, yeah. I, I I never in my lifetime would I ever thought I'd see that happen, yeah. to be honest with you. So the whole Xbox has no games thing is complete bullshit. But you it, could say, hey, they don't have triple A games. They don't well, have exclusive well, at least not great ones. Well it I I, I think the Xbox has no games thing is more like a casual thing because it's like people you you and me we play a lot of indie games play a lot of sure. games, sure. but like at the same time I, I I look at I think about this from an outside perspective from people who only like who really liked uh like FIFA and Madden and like play an occasional game like, yeah. like start like Starfield for example like they're sure. they're excited for that. Uh, when when you look at what Xbox has right now coming up, it's mm-hmm. pretty thin for those people. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Um, and that it's gonna kind of depend on when the hell we're gonna see Fable and Perfect Dark and uh, all these games that still feel like they were announced a long time ago, and they but they still they're, feel to me like not, they're far yeah. off. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll know in June if that's correct, because I imagine we'll get updates on a few of those and maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe Fable will be next year, but I kind of doubt it. Um, and a lot of this was exacerbated by Redfall coming out. And yeah. Redfall is a game I believe I've said on this show was my most anticipated game of the year. And oh boy, <laughs> that didn't go well. Yeah. So I played about a half hour of this piece of shit, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, man. I really hated what I played, not going to lie. It, yeah. You know, and I I have heard the argument put forth that people are worried about other Xbox games because of this game. And the more I hear Phil Spencer talk about it, and the more I kind of like think about uh, the sort of trajectory of this thing, mm-hmm. I don't really think this was ever going to be a good game i don't think there's like there was ever a future where this could like you you said i think in the chat a couple weeks ago that they should delay it again i don't know Uh, if that would have helped yeah now i i think that too um so there's a before this game came out there were three things that i knew were going to be a problem one was 60 frames a sec or lack thereof 60 frames a second on console one was host only story progression so if you play co-op only the host actually moves the story forward and the other was last was always online which actually i don't care about always online but a lot of other people do um so i thought delay it until you fix those three things but it turns out the game's got a lot more problems than it that. does it does yeah. I, chief among those i the game is ugly <laughs> like, mm-hmm. i i posted a, a screenshot on facebook of nbc i saw and, he, and my friend Matt pointed out he looks like a pizza parlor statue. <laughs> uh, it's just not. It. I. I just don't think it was ever going to be a good game. I think. And that. I, I feel like. And actually, it's funny. This kind of reminds me of how I feel about Recore. Um, where on paper, I think this could have been if if they'd executed the idea well i think this is an idea that could have been a big exclusive for xbox because people love borderlands they They do do. it's very popular um if xbox had their own exclusive borderlands with uh you know kind of it's a i mean it's not horror but it's kind of a light spooky vibe which right now it's very much stephen king yeah which right now you know horror feels back with resident evil uh, blowing up and even a little dead space and stuff like 
if they had their own Borderlands with a light horror thing and it was executed well, I think this could have been, yeah. you know, n not as big as Halo, but a pretty damn big thing for them. Um, maybe on the level of like a Sea of Thieves or something, but um, it just was not executed well. And, you know, I, I think similar things with ReCore. And ReCore is funny because that is a game that uh, launched poorly. They later did a definitive edition, which uh, they reworked a lot of it. Not just like, oh, we fixed the technical issues, but like, oh, we changed the structure of this. Yeah. And now that game's fucking awesome, and I recommend it to anybody, hmm. but it was too late. How many people went back and played it after they yeah, fixed no, it? No one cared about Recore once it came out. I know. It, it's a damn shame. If it had been that way at launch, I think we, we would have got a Recore too, I think. And yeah. uh, same thing with Redfall. Now, even if they fix it, I don't know if it'll matter. The core concept is really cool. It's just unfortunate. It's in the state it is. And uh. it, and I, 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 I just don't. I, I just look at the thing. and I'm like, I don't think this was ever going to be good. I, I just did not. The story is boring and nonsensical. Yeah. Uh, it's just and not. It, it's not. And it looks to me like I, I didn't even play this game. I told you how much I was looking forward to it, and I was just so bummed out with the way the reviews went that I'm like, I'm not even going to mess with it. Um, but one thing it looks to me like was that the characters' abilities look boring and unimpactful. Yeah. Yeah, boring, unimpactful, uh, is ugly, <laughs> really ugly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what that's else? a it, damn shame. You know, it feels soulless in a way that I don't expect from Arcane. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, that's just a damn shame how that went. Uh, and you, um, you had mentioned the Phil Spencer interview. Um, yeah. did you watch that whole thing? I watched clips of it because I was at okay. work when it came out. Uh, um. I would recommend if you get time to go ahead. So this was on Kind of Funny Games X Cast, if people don't know. Phil Spencer went on. They booked him a couple of weeks ago, and they didn't know that Activision Blizzard was going to get blocked, which we haven't talked about that yet, but we're going to talk about Activision in a minute. Oh, God. Um, they didn't know about Redfall. So, like, and, and it was the same day they had announced that uh, their summer games fest show. So like they had planned, Hey, we're going to talk about Phil and hype up the summer game fest shit. And it turned out. And then the shit hit the fan yeah. right before they had him. So this interview, you know, you got to give him credit. He could have canceled. Um, he absolutely could have canceled, but he still went on and he faced the music and they were, you know, pretty tough on him. Uh, not even like, Hey, Phil, you fucked up here, but more just like, Hey, Talk to us here. What, what, what's really going yeah. on and what's really and, the problem? And honestly, you don't usually get this level of openness. Absolutely not. Jim Ryan would executive. never do this. Yeah, he would He would go, he would be like, oh, actually, uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to, what, did, what was that thing he did in the emails where he was like, I love oh, cats his, and dogs? Yeah, he, uh, he had adopted a dog. It was right after, I think, Roby <laughs> Wade was struck down. Oh, and God. He, God. What the fuck? And, you know, I don't even think Doug Bowser would do this. Uh, no. Maybe not even Reggie. I mean, Reggie's, you know, he fa he's faced some tough questions. Reggie threads people on Twitter. <laughs> God, that was hilarious. <laughs> um, if people don't know, Reggie, somebody posted a, that they had are playing Tears of the Kingdom, the uh, leaked version, and Reggie quoted Take It at him. That whole thing about I got a special set of skills and shit. <laughs> it's, which I don't even know why Reggie cares anymore. He doesn't it, work there. Yeah, you just, you know, have, uh, he was just having a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I think he was just fucking around. He thought it was funny, probably. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, yeah, you got to give Phil credit for that. Uh, and he, had, like, he seemed depressed about this whole thing. Like, you yeah. can't say he's not taking it hard. And honestly, one of the things, I would maybe expect him to go on there and maybe no-sell it a bit and be like, hey, because the game's on Game Pass and on Steam, you could maybe say, hey... A million people are playing it. That's great. And, yeah. But no, no, he didn't. No, he, he didn't. He was super honest about it. And I was like, you know what? Mm. That's I, I respect that. Mm. And super honest about a lot of things. One of the things that he had mentioned um, that kind of is blowing up. And a lot of people, of course, are taking us out of not even just taking out of context, but they're just uh, completely misrepresenting what he said. He had mentioned that, hey, we're not going to sell more consoles than Sony or Nintendo just by putting out good games. Um, because the Xbox One PS4 generation was where so many people built their digital libraries. So many people bought a PS4 and bought hundreds of games digitally. They're, no matter if Starfield is an 11 out of 10, is what he said, his words, they're not just going to give up all that. No, they won't do it. Get rid of their P PlayStations and switch to Xbox. Maybe they can sell them an Xbox as a second console, 
that's fine, but that's not going to change the market share. No. No. Um, and that's kind of what he said. And then people took that to mean, oh, he's saying they don't need to make great games, which, no, that's it's not what he not said. not at all what he said. <laughs> not even close. And I think, honestly, he's correct. Like, it, oh, there's 100%. not... There's nothing they can do. It's just like, they, you know, they, they lost where it sucked the most. Absolutely. And that's why they've shifted their plan where console sales... You know, I'm not saying they're not important, but they're not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. That's why they're on PC. That's why they're going to cloud. That's why they make subscriptions such a big thing. They they can't win by playing that same old yeah. game. They have to change the game they're playing, uh, which is what they're trying to do. And like I said, they're they're making money, so it's not like they're they're failing at that. No, um, they are failing at selling consoles for. Some reasons that are their fault, some reasons that aren't. They also still have Series X supply issues, which is really bizarre to yeah, me. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. It's so weird. Like, it felt like a year ago they got their shit straight before Sony and then just fell off a cliff uh, as far as getting Series Xs out there. Series Ss are abundant, but, you know, that's kind of... I've seen some evidence that the Series S is kind of flopped. I don't know if it that's... I have people, one, and I I, de I really want a Series X, to be honest with you. I'm I not the blame. biggest fan. <laughs> I love my Series X. I don't blame you. I, I, I'm still playing it all the time, even without these, you know, first-party bangers. Um, So, we, we still got to get into the Activision side of this thing, yeah. but kind of... Before we jump into that, is there anything else in the Phil Spencer interview? I, you know what? Actually, I, I got something else on that. One thing he had mentioned, and one of the reasons this happened... um. When they acquired Activision Blizzard, Starfield and Redfall were both in development. And Redfall was further along. He had mentioned they have trouble getting involved in a game that they acquire halfway through that's far along already. Mm -hmm. um, which is why like he said they had the Coalition and Rare come in to try to get the 60 frames a second working, but they just came in too late. Mm -hmm. um, they And we've always kind of heard that Especially with the studios they've acquired, with Bethesda in particular, Xbox has been pretty hands-off to let them do their thing. Which, you know, there's positives to that, obviously. Uh, you don't want too much corporate heavy-handedness and, and, and uh, I don't know, just telling them what to make. You want them to have creative freedom. But also, hey, you got to support them as well. Yeah, I, and I think that Bethesda in particular have such, like, a distinct... All their, all their studios have such a distinct style and, like... Mm -hmm how they make games it doesn't make sense to kind of jump in there and be like change that up do this it's like uh, yeah I wouldn't if i was phil i wouldn't mess with that yeah well but but in this case and uh, yeah that worked for hi-fi rush and i mm. kind of worked for ghostwire tokyo like the game's not amazing but you know it's there but it didn't work this time like this was a case where they needed to jump in and they weren't able to at least not in time mm -hmm. um so yeah it's, it's gonna have to be a case-by-case -case basis um I get, they can't be completely hands off. They can't be completely hands on. I I don't know the right balance to find there. Uh, it's not an easy problem to solve. No. And I believe Matt Booty does not actually. Matt Booty's head of first party at Xbox Game Studios. I don't think he touches the Bethesda stuff. I think there's oh. another guy. I can't remember his name. It's not Pete Hines, but I think there's somebody else too, who kind of does that side of things. Um, but I do wonder if maybe. Like, like I'd mentioned that they had the Coalition of Rare come in. Well, I wonder if there was more relationship between the Xbox Game Studios side of things and the Bethesda side of things, if that would have happened earlier. I don't know. I, I, it, there's, there's no way to tell. Yeah. It's, it's we're, we don't, we don't work for Microsoft as much as we love Xbox, you know? It, it, yeah. It's just like, is what it but is. But something's off. Something's off, though, for sure. So, yeah, something. Um, though, though I, I I am not of the opinion that I am worried for future game releases because I'm I'm looking at Redfall. I'm like I I I just don't know. I don't I don't know. Sure, uh, I, I'm not either really. But and and again, the showcase coming up in June is gonna tell the tale. There's there's kind of um among the Xbox community, there's been a group that they're now calling the Elusive Five of five games that they showed CG trailers of, and we haven't heard. A yeah. damn word I've sent. It's Fable, Perfect Dark, Everwild, State of Decay 3, and Avowed. Uh, and also, you could throw Contraband in there. Um, 
Oh, and the Indiana Jones game that oh, I, yeah. that Todd Fuck. Howard's working on. <laughs> I forgot about that. Shit. So yeah, if we don't, if this showcase happens in June and like we don't get updates on uh, at least you know three of those or so, man. I'll take just one, honestly, at this point. Yeah, I know. I would like to see what Perfect Dark actually is gonna be. I'd like to see what Everwild is. What the hell is that game? <laughs> Everwild is something where I look at that and I'm real worried it might be NFT related. <laughs> oh, on. they wouldn't. I'm do real that. worried. I don't think they would do that. I, I I don't think so either. But there's a small part of me that's like, maybe it is. Shit, don't scare me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I think the art style of that game's incredible. So oh, it looks I, uh, cool. Looks I really awesome. I hope it's a game. <laughs> I don't know. I hope it's a game too. Um. And then, all right, now we got to talk about Activision Blizzard. Yeah. Fuck. All right, so, I mean, since our last recording, there was a lot of ups and downs and shit, but the the, the big thing here is that the CMA, uh, who is kind of the regulator... <clears throat> God, my throat's hurting. Uh, kind of the regulator in the UK has blocked Activision Blizzard King uh, mm-hmm. from being bought by Xbox. Did they do it because of Call of Duty? No. No. At least not officially. They did it because of cloud gaming and according to them xbox has a big lead in cloud gaming already and they think with call of duty on their side they would be able to shut out anybody else now it seems their math is flawed because they are when they say that xbox has a big lead in cloud gaming they're counting all game pass ultimate subscribers Mm -hmm. in that and because they all have access to cloud gaming, but they're not all using it. No, I don't. I I have Game Pass Ultimate. I don't use cloud streaming at all. Me neither. I've I've tested it out a couple times just to mess around with it, but I've never actually played anything on there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So th- this seems ass backwards. And this was one of the things Phil talked about in his interview about hey, this isn't a market yet, and it's and it's never going to be at least in my opinion, it's never going to be a separate market. It's- like it's always going to be. This, there's not going to be, maybe not any, or at least not many, cloud-only games. It's still going to be the same games that you're getting on PC and console, I yeah. think. I, I look at the, remember a couple, few years ago, everyone was like, VR is the future. VR will mm-hmm. replace video games. Like, everyone's like, VR, VR, VR. Yeah. VR is its own market now. It's not, there is not, we're not all living in the fucking uh, Matrix I'm not in a Ryu skin right now, talking sure. to Chun Li. You know, uh, except for in Fortnite. <laughs> in Fortnite, I am uh, all the time. <laughs> but you know, it cloud it'll never replace what we have. To be honest with you, I don't think it will. Yeah, no, and it, it's always, in my opinion, just going to be a supplemental thing, almost like. Uh, I mean, it's almost like the new version of handheld gaming. Of mm-hmm. like, hey, they used to make specific handheld consoles, and I guess you. I guess you say with the Steam Deck and that uh, ROG thing coming out, they still do. But like, I yeah, I don't know. It, it's not. Uh, it's just such a weird decision. I think. Yeah. I, it, it honestly felt to me like, th- like this thing. They announced they were going to acquire Activist Blizzard. The CMA immediately said in their heads, "No, that's too big. We're not going to allow that." And they tried to work backwards to make yeah. it make sense. Well, it, 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 my, I've, I, I, I'm of the opinion that. Because we live in times we do, and CMA and the FCC have allowed a lot of these corporations to get a lot get away with a lot of shit. Like Warner Brothers is is was on their fifth or sixth merger. Uh, you know the uh, Monsanto is this giant corp- mega corporation that owns everything, and they got away with so much and people's eyes were on Activision Blizzard and they decided they were going to want it to appear like they were, they're taking a stand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you. And you know, uh, Disney, uh, with Disney uh, buying Fox. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. It's, it's just all performative. Now, do I <laughs> here? I've been thinking about this a lot. And what I was going to mm-hmm. say about this is, do I sit up at night and worry whether or not Xbox owns Activision? Not really, to be honest. With you. I, I don't. do, but the, the reason why I, I worry that the employees of Activision are going to 
be hurt by this. That's my worry. Absolutely. But, I, I got a list here. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. But I, I look at it like, okay, I shouldn't root for a, a corporation to own another corporation. I won't do that. But yeah, okay. I won't. I won't sit there and be like, and not emphasize with the people who work at Activision. I'm not it's like it's not. Absolutely, I and I hear and I look. I, I when this thing broke, I was pissed, and I'm still kind of pissed, honestly. And I know I'm going to come off as a corporate cheerleader. I know I'm going to come off as an Xbox fanboy here, but I got a list here because now this broke a couple weeks ago, and I've been I've been talking about it a lot to other people, and so. I, w- I wanted to organize my thoughts a little bit. Um, it's bad for ABK employees, as you mentioned. It's bad for anybody who wants Bobby Kotick to get the hell out. And yes, you know, he would get a golden parachute, and that sucks, but he would at least be gone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's bad for unionization with for at least ABK, because Activision is not going to allow, or, not, or not, at least not going to be as cooperative mm-hmm. as Microsoft is being to allow them to unionize. Now, it might happen anyway, and there are some... Um, unions forming in other yep. companies now which is good um but bobby Kodak's gonna fight that like he's, he's gonna tooth and nail. yeah he's going to yeah. start cracking down as soon as possible yeah it's bad for game pass subscribers who would like call of duty on game pass mm-hmm. uh it's bad for switch players who were gonna get call of duty uh Act- xbox had signed that deal uh with uh nintendo actually i shouldn't say switch because i think more it's more likely to be on the next uh, console the switch to switch plus yeah. new switch exactly. new <laughs> Uh, it's bad for people who I'm I'm one of these who I think Call of Duty would be a better franchise if it wasn't annual. And I think Xbox I, is in a I pe- actually agree too. <laughs> yeah, I think Xbox is in a better position to do that than uh than Activision is. Um it's bad for people who would like Activision to make other franchises like Spyro and Crash. I think Xbox needs family platformers so i think they would have uh said hey toys for bob get a new crash get a new spyro i guess toys for bob is doing that crash team game now uh, yeah the but, you know, team rumble yeah yeah which looks kind of neat but you know I'm, I'm talking about a real platformer mm-hmm. um i think it's bad for cloud gaming overall because cl- activision games are not on any cloud service right now they're not on the xbox one they're not on uh nvidia geforce which by the way I had heard, I, I, I should verify this, I, so don't take me as gospel on this, but I had heard that actually more people play NVIDIA than Xbox Cloud Gaming right it now. It would, wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Um, where did I, da, 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 da. It's bad for ending, and I think most of us want this to end, dumbass deals that of exclusive content in one version of the game. You know, like PlayStation yeah. always does, hey, you get this extra mode in Call of Duty exclusive for one year for playstation that shit's dumb and you know and as as more games adopt cross play overall we need to abolish that shit and Mm. uh i think that would have helped because the biggest one the biggest perpetrator right now is call of duty and obviously xbox wasn't gonna do that with at least with playstation and i think as part of their as part of the paperwork they'd said they weren't gonna do it even on on xbox um it's bad for if you want to see Apple and Google's duopoly of the App Store challenge, because a big part of this was Microsoft was going to, and probably still is going to, open up their own App Store mm-hmm. uh, that you would be able to access on, you'd definitely be able to access on Android, and you'd probably be able to do it on iPhone when these, there's a, a European law that's going to go through sometime next year that says, hey, Apple, you have to allow other stores on, on your platforms. And so Xbox was going to open up or Microsoft, I should say, was going to open up one because they would have Candy Crush. They would have Call of Duty Mobile. They would have Hearthstone, Diablo Immortal, in addition to the games they already have, like Solitaire, and mm. uh, which don't don't laugh. Solitaire on mobile is a big deal. It, yeah, no, uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of old ladies yeah. at work who really love their Solitaire. Yeah. Um, and to bad for anyone who wants to see Sony challenged more in the console space because... Yeah, you put Call of Duty on Game Pass, I think people would buy more mm-hmm. Xboxes. Uh, maybe not a ton. Maybe not. Like, they, they were some research out there that said 2% of PlayStation yeah, people would switch. I, I, yeah, I don't believe I know. that. I, I don't believe me that. Me neither. Me neither. But I, I think it would be a... a hey, it would just, just challenge it, Sony it would, more. It would sell Xboxes, though. I, I think yeah. it would. But uh, I don't know. Ten, like, 2%? That seems too high. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And so that was kind of my list here. So yeah, I'm I'm not happy about this. Even if you know you can call me a fanboy if you'd like, and I know I, I kind of sound that way. I get it, but I I think those are all pretty good reasons. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with the the. There are bad things about this. I just mm-hmm. I look at this and I'm like, all right, it's. I have to remember Microsoft is not my friend. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like it's not. They're still a terrible, terrible company sometimes. <laughs> But they're less terrible than they are. <laughs> what's going they are. on? Uh... They are less terrible than other companies for sure. Yeah. Um, they're the best bad guy. Yeah. They're the lesser evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and they're, they're going to appeal. Um, I'm not an expert on, on how that works in the UK, but um, my understanding now it goes to a board called CATS. I don't know what CATS stands for. It's a great um, name, though. Yeah. And they will, uh, I don't believe, I've heard some conflicting things about this, but I don't believe they can straight up overrule the CMA. They can go, they can decide that the CMA's, um, process wasn't done right mm-hmm. or, uh, like they, they, they can't necessarily disagree with their opinion, but they can say, Hey, your process wasn't done right. So do it again. Yeah. And so then it just goes right back to the CMA, the same people. So like, it feels uh, to me like there's maybe like a five to 10% chance of this working out. Yeah. It, you know, and that sucks. I think it does suck. It, it sucks for the actors and employees. I really hope they do unionize. I hope. Absolutely. I hope and it also, falls down a flight of stairs or something. I don't absolutely. know. Absolutely. It also sucks because it feels like Xbox has been kind of stuck in the mud in the last, you know, year while, while dealing of this. with this. Yeah. Yes. Like, I think they're working with Crystal Dynamics on Perfect Dark and they're working with Eidos Montreal on Fable. Those two, Square sold those two studios to, to Embracer. Embr- yeah. I bet Xbox would have bought them if they weren't tied up with this. And I bet they probably would have bought at this point. um, And I I don't know for sure, obviously, but you know, they worked with a Sobo on flight simulator. They're they're also the team that did a plague tale. How weird is that? That the team did a plague tale. It's so weird, but like for some reason in my head, it makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. They might've grabbed them. They might've grabbed creative assembly or not creative assembly of uh, what's that one? Certain affinity who is doing, the Halo Battle Royale, not Battle Royale thing. Marathon? Which, no, I'm just kidding. That's good. But, well, yeah. Um, Tatanka is the code name of it. We'll, I, hopefully we'll see that in June. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a couple, like, the, the people who talk about Sony's organic growth of studios. They only buy studios that they have a close relationship with, which isn't entirely true. But no. people talk about that. Well, shit, I think there's a couple studios that Xbox could have had organic growth with in that time if they weren't. And we're busy. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, yeah, and, it's just not, I don't think it's going to work out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so either. Um, but actually that brings up the point. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, and Phil Spencer had said uh, like a year ago or so when this was kind of all thing and said, if you don't have a plan for mobile, you're not going to be relevant. For very long, because unfortunately, you know, I don't play many mobile games. I don't think you do either. So we, no. we don't care about this. But reality is the uh, <clears throat> people who play games on console and PC is kind of plateauing. Um, but people who play games on mobile is spiking huge. That's where the future growth is to get mm. new gamers. Um, and Sony's opened a mobile division and Microsoft has dabbled in mobile, but they don't have a good foothold in there i worry that if they don't find a way to get into mobile in a big way eventually microsoft is going to stop giving so much money to the gaming division yeah and i don't know what the alternative is because maybe i don't know mobile companies that well but like if you can't get king who do you get well they can't, they can't get they can't get this uh angry bird team anymore well if they get all of Sega, they could. <laughs> they could. I don't. Which, I honestly, honestly don't think they should go for Sega at this point. After this, maybe don't. Uh, I mean, if I, honestly, I kind of think that's the best bet. If you, if you're blocked completely on ABK, maybe. Because uh, then you, you also, you know, you get strength in your PC stuff with like Total War and. You also football. get Yakuza, so I mean, hey, pretty yes, cool. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, Sega's got a good lineup, too. I, I, I think they're not bad as a, as a second best option. No, they're pretty good. Uh, I, I don't know. I Personally, I would just open up our own mobile studio, figure it out from there. But, like, I... I mean, if you can, yeah. But, but I also think it's going to take more than just one studio. Like, I think it's yep. going to... And that's why, like, even Sega, I don't know if that's going to... It's not as good as... Like, people... When, when people bring up mobile, they just think of, in, in regards to Activision, ABK, they just think of King. But there's also Call of Duty Mobile, a big ass deal, yeah. and and uh, Diablo Immortal is a big ass deal, and so is Hearthstone. So yep. it turns out we there, do all have phones. Yeah, there's nobody as good as ABK for no. Microsoft's mobile needs. It's it's the big it's the the big one. Yeah, I I, I think the second best option would be MiHoYo, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, they do, you know, if people don't know, MiHoYo is the company that does Genshin Impact and now Honkai Star Rail uh, just came out. But yeah, they're they're close with Sony. Um, and, and even so, like they're, uh, are they in China or are they in South Korea? South Korea, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just don't see that happening. But yeah, I don't know. I, 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 if, if this doesn't happen, Xbox needs a mobile plan. It does. And I don't know if there's many good options for that. I would buy Maybe whatever. Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, Raid Shadow. You read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, maybe not a bad idea. I don't know the mobile market well enough, so it's hard for me to like say. But if they Shadow. bought Raid Shadow Legends, how hype would you be for a console ver- like a console spinoff? I, mean, <laughs> I would not at all. I would. <laughs> Have you seen some of the, like orc women in that? In this case, no, I haven't. <laughs> there, it, that game is weirdly horny. <laughs> um, yeah, I still feel like there was something else I was gonna say about all this, but I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. We're gonna be now. We're in it for even longer now. This is probably going till next year. God, please end it. <laughs> I know. I like. I'm. When something big happens like this, like the CMA block, I don't mind talking about it then. Mm. But when when it's normally like all these kind of small things and it feels like all right, we, we can't ignore it but i'm also kind of sick of just regurgitating the same stuff yeah. um but but this was a big thing this this was the biggest thing so far yeah this was like a definitive decision well somewhat definitive in that they yeah. can sort of appeal it but you know it's it's kind of a big blow yeah it's a huge blow and just today they actually um, they hired a lawyer team that apparently has had successful appeals in the EU before, um, <laughs> which if people don't know, the purchase agreement says they need US, UK, EU, and China. Those are the big four. And then and they want everybody else too, but like those are the four that are ex- absolutely necessary. Um, the US also blocked it, but they're most likely going to lose in court, like bad. I don't think <laughs> yeah, anybody's really- we suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, their reasoning too was also as dumb. Yeah. Um, like if people could come up with a, it's been now about a year and a half this thing's going, and I'm like open for somebody to give me a good reason why it should be blocked. And hey, like I said, maybe I'm I'm an Xbox guy first and foremost, so maybe I'm biased here. But so far, nobody's given me a good reason. I don't think other than just like, hey, they're a big company, and yeah, they are. But I I do I do think it is a little silly when people are like they're going to create a monopoly. I'm like I don't necessarily think they are <laughs> no they can't you're not gonna kill sony and especially hell call of duty's going to remain on sony for at least 10 years and i think forever i don't think they're ever gonna take it away especially with like phil spencer coming out and be like yeah we lost super hard last generation like <laughs> yeah. it's it's not happening it, yeah. if anything sony will create a monopoly yeah I, fucking honestly that worries me sometimes um hey at least nintendo's still hanging in there yeah. nintendo's on I've been playing my, I mean, just Breath of the Wild, I've been playing my Switch so much, and I also bought Advance Wars, which I wanted to get some time in and talk about in this episode, but I didn't make time for it because of Breath of the Wild. Um, I guess that's it for ABK. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to be on this train for quite a while still. God. It sucks. Oh, uh, God. The EU decision comes in like two weeks, I think, which they are, they're expected to pass it, but hey, so was the UK. So find out. who knows? Uh, if the EU actually, I will say, if the EU blocks it, then Microsoft probably just drops it at that point. Yeah, because that's it, that's bad. It's not good. Then you got to appeal in the US, the UK, and the EU. It's 
And I don't know what the appeals process is like in the EU, but probably harder than, or probably easier than the UK. I, you know, actually, to insert myself into UK politics for a oh, moment. Oh, no. Which, <laughs> I know, I know. Doesn't it seem fucking off that the appeals process, that, that, that the CMA is, just seems to be such the final word that the that an appeal process for them is only on merits of if they did their process wrong or not, shouldn't there be a way there, yeah, to there take them to more, court? There should be more regulation there. Cause like, if you think about it, it's just a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Cause they could just be like, Oh, okay. We will. We, it's the same decision again. We just took longer to do it. Right. Yeah, you should. I mean, the the way it works here is you can take the FTC to court. And yeah, I mean, there's obviously, I don't know, that doesn't sound nice, but it does feel like that is the way it should be. Apparently, it's super easy. (laughs) Yeah, well, that too. Maybe that's a problem too. Maybe it shouldn't be so easy to win, but you should be able to take them to court if you believe they got it wrong. And that seems to be not an option with CMA, which seems so ass backwards to me. But I'm not English, so. Maybe I'm uh, out of my depth. And that's why we dumped all their tea off a boat. (laughs) Yes. And, uh, I don't know. Trying to make some joke about the coronation today, but I got nothing. (laughs) 